Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about why most Americans, most foreigners out there just, you know, cannot survive out here in Mexico. They can't hack it. They just end up not liking it out here in Mexico and end up going back home. Now, again, it's not everybody. A lot of people come out here. They love it. They fall in love with Mexico and they just never look back. But there's a lot of people out there just being 100% realistic. And in fact, it's mostly Americans. But there's a lot of people out there that they come out here. They have an illusion, an idea of what Mexico is going to be. And then once they get out here, it is not what they thought it was going to be. And they end up hating it or just not liking it and end up going home or going elsewhere. Um, so... That's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I made a list, you know, of reasons. I got like five, six reasons out here um, that we're going to be talking about. And uh, let's just get into it. Let's just get started. So um, the main reason, I think the main, main, main reason that a lot of people are having a lot of trouble these days, you know, when they come out to Mexico is uh, they refuse to lower their living standards. I mean, that's just the truth. Now, let me expand on that. Many refuse to lower their living standards in order to increase their quality of life. Okay. And remember, I think for a lot of people, you know, the idea of moving to Mexico is to increase your quality of life. And uh, most people, they think that quality of life means more shiny things. So again, what I mean by living standards is that in the U.S., okay, especially in the U.S., I don't know about other countries, but at least in the U.S., you know, a lot of people are used to, you know, a certain lifestyle, having certain things in a home, you know, having, again, um, it's hard to explain until you actually move to Mexico, but once you move to Mexico, you start noticing things very quickly about the construction of most buildings and most homes and that's when you quickly realize oh this is why a lot of things are a lot less expensive you know in Mexico because they don't have all of this insulation they don't have the proper tubing the proper electrical work the proper whatever it is and because of that you know a lot of people they start you know, they get a regular Mexican home and then they start retrofitting the home in order to fit the lifestyle they used to have back in the U.S. only to quickly realize it's going to cost them just about the same as living in the U.S. to not just rebuild it, but even maintain it in some cases. And so in many cases, you know, it just really depends on, you know, what you're doing out there. But, you know, when you come out here and you focus more on quality of life, then you realize, oh, wait a minute, I can just live like the Mexicans and have a Mexican home. And it doesn't mean that you cannot have all the fancy things and live in a fancy home. But the Mexicans that do live like that out here, which is more and more every day, um, the Mexicans that do live like that, they work very hard to get there. And they slowly get there, you know, from humble beginnings all the way until they get to that point. And so, it's very different when you do it that way. It's obviously a lot more cost effective. But when a lot of expats, you know, a lot of foreigners come out here and they just start throwing money around in order to, you know, build their dream home, build their dream uh, whatever it is, um, they quickly realize they cannot keep up with, you know, the cost, you know, of all these things. And so, you know, a lot of people out there, they get that misconception you know, they're having a lot of misconceptions. We're going to be talking about this a lot more in depth in other videos and, 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 and you know, uh, going forward on this uh, channel because it's, it's a topic that's going to only get, you know, more uh, intense as time goes on. And what do I mean? So a lot of people out there, you know, they are constantly complaining or constantly saying, oh, you know, things are very expensive out there in Mexico. They're not what they used to be. Things are very, very expensive. And they keep complaining about how expensive it is. And then they complain about, oh, it's expensive because there's other foreigners, other expats that are coming in and they're the ones that are raising the price. And all of it is wrong. Now, not all of it. Some of it is wrong. Some of it is right. That's what we're going to talk about right now. So what's really going on is the fact that you know, um, a lot of expats, a lot of foreigners out there that are coming and, you know, ones watching this video for the most part or watching any kind of YouTube video about moving out to Mexico, 
again, they think that they are the only ones that are moving to Mexico and doing what they're doing. In fact, they, they, um, when they look at a home price, a condo, for example, or an apartment on the beach that's being sold or, you know, they're being, uh, yeah, being sold for like around 8 million pesos, which is like around 400,000 US dollars. A lot of Americans are like, oh my God, that's insane. That's crazy. You know, I would just buy that, the equivalent of that in the US. Why would I go to Mexico and buy it there? It's the same price. Who's paying that? Who's, who's, uh, why is it so expensive? That sounds insane. And then you look at the same token of when you ask a, a Mexican now that's, you know, moving on up, on up, uh, up the, economic economic social was it social economic ladder or whatever and now they can afford these things and well now they're the ones that are buying it they're the ones that are driving the mercedes they're the ones living in the fancy neighborhoods they're the ones that are creating and causing this gentrification and so a lot of expats that have been living here for a long time or even expats now that are moving out here you know um with the mindset of retired i'm going to come out there with my money whatever that money is and i'm going to live like a beyond the king okay because look a lot of people get confused when i say i live like a king i really all i mean is that i got a roof over my head i got food and i got freedom i live like a king for some people i still live like a bum all right, but that's okay. That's not that's not up to me. I, other people's perception or idea idea of b living like a king is literally living like a king, and they quickly realize when they come out to Mexico. Oh wait a minute, I can't live like a king. I'll be lucky if I can live middle class. All right, and um, and then they complain about you know again the inflation and uh, gentrification and all this other stuff. But the reality is is that you know the typical Mexican. Again, I'm a middle class Mexican coming from other parts of the country, you know, Mexico City and other, you know, parts of the country that were there, they do have more access to making more money. Um, they don't see this as expensive. I mean, yeah, sure, they see it as expensive, inflation, yada, yada, but it's not as expensive as it is to you. Now, why is it more expensive for you coming with US dollars or with Canadian dollars or euros? Well, I'm sure you guys are aware your currency is not what it used to be, whatever the currency is. And so as they print more money or whatever it is they're doing in your country or your region, um, as your currency, okay, whatever your currency that is, keeps getting devalued because they print more money or whatever it is, that currency is worth less in this country. And... The double whammy is the fact that not only is it worth less, is the fact that the Mexican peso now is getting stronger and stronger. And especially, again, when you lean it up against, you know, when you compare it to the U.S. dollar, the euro, the Canadian peso, dollar, whatever, and, and so on and so forth. So what does that mean? Your pension, your retirement, your U.S. dollars that you're making from your online job, whatever money that you're making that's coming in U.S. dollars, in euros, in Canadian dollars, is going to be worth less and less and less in Mexico each and every day. Because again, your currency buys less pesos, okay? And the kicker is that the peso is getting stronger, okay? Meaning that for the typical Mexican, now that peso buys more and they're getting paid more and their their ability to make money is increased and that money that they're making is worth more you follow what i'm saying so for the typical mexican things are just going to keep getting better and better and better if you have the ability to make money in pesos okay and i'm not talking about working for a job okay that's another thing that you know, we're going to talk about it as well, because a lot of people have the, again, misconception they can come out to Mexico and work a job. Sure. Yeah, I guess. You know what I mean? Are you going to really compete with a typical Mexican that, again, not only knows the language and knows how to do the job, but they can work eight to 10 hours for around 10 to 15 US dollars a day? You're going to, you're not going to be able to compare, compete with that. How? How are you going to compete with that? Um, well, you can. Again, you can work for American companies in Mexico or foreign companies. 
in Mexico. Um, the fact that if you know Spanish and English or Spanish in another language, <clears throat> that would help greatly um, to the company. And uh, again, depending on the sector that you're in, the industrial sector that you're in or whatever sector you're in, you know, you, you could, uh, you know, provide value out here and they could pay you very well in pesos. Outside of that, you know, you got to have the ability to make your own money. And that's another reason. That's one of the reasons that, you know, a lot of people, you know, they fail to live out here in Mexico because they come out to Mexico and they fail at making money, meaning that, you know, remember, I give you guys advice on how to make money. There's a lot of people out there that give you advice on how to make money, but a lot of people fail at making money, meaning, you know, you might come from another trade and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm going to be a digital nomad without ever being a digital nomad. And then only to quickly find out that you suck at being a digital nomad. And so, you know, that's that realization. And so and then again, the whole aspect of coming out here and then working for a Mexican company with other Mexicans, you know, and again, that wage is not going to really cut it for you. And uh, what I always tell people is that, you know, eventually you got to start a business or start, you know, again, integrating. So that's the thing for a lot of people, this whole video it's it's a, it's a moot point you know a lot of people come out here they love it and they succeed and it's all great and gravy baby but for a lot of people when they got to deal with a lot of these issues that's where the problem starts so when they can't figure out a way to make money and they realize that they got to actually work whatever it is that they got to do you know what I mean whether they got to start a business do their own thing you know um they realize that hey i wanted to come to mexico and be a vlogger <laughs> be a youtuber and to quickly realize that this doesn't make any money all right and um and i can go on and on and the, the fact that you know a lot of people just fail because they don't put the effort that is needed and then when they do put that effort that is needed they quickly realize as well that they're probably not going to make as much money as they thought and again it goes with everything else meaning hey you know i make you know uh, let's say you, you have the ability to make two to three thousand dollars us okay a month and live in mexico that's a lot of money but then when you put into the equation the fact that you want to live like you live in the usa then you're back in you're back at square one where things are going to be the same price in a sense and that lifestyle is going to be the same thing a tesla in the us is i mean a tesla in mexico they sell teslas here okay so a tesla in mexico is going to be the same price as a tesla in the us same thing as an iphone same thing as everything else so if you want that lifestyle, if you want those things, then that's going to cost you money. You know, I have like the cheapest, you know, um, Samsung or Motorola. I don't even know what I got. You know what I mean? That I can afford. You know what I mean? You know, something that can do the job. I'm not worried about that. And the same thing goes with all the other stuff. In fact, the only thing I spend money on are maybe equipment for my job. Things that I do. You know, again, like I, I spend money on. I had to get a new GoPro. I got my microphone. You know, things like that. Things of the sort. Okay. But... You know, for me, at least, you know, I know what I want out of my life. And so it's not a problem. I'm living great, you know. And uh, but for a lot of people, that's the problem. You know, they, they know what they want out of life as well. But that want is not being able to is not going to be met out here just simply because of the fact that, again, they want to live the same lifestyle as they live in the USA. And so then you come out here and. Not only is the cost going to be the same, but it's going to be more difficult because, well, you can live an American lifestyle in America, no problem. But living an American lifestyle in Mexico, it's a little difficult, you know, just like living a Mexican lifestyle in the USA. You can still do it, but, you know, you got to go to certain areas, you know, like El Barrio, you know, and live with the Mexicans and don't ever leave that bubble. So same thing with a lot of expats they come out here they don't learn the language they don't want to learn the language they don't want to assimilate with the culture they don't want to you know be part of mexico and they just stay in their expat enclaves in their pockets and there's nothing wrong with that except when you know they start complaining about a lot of these things that can be easily fixed by you know integrating you know again learning the language you know, going to Mexican-owned businesses, talking to Mexicans, having Mexican friends. And I can go on and on. A lot of people just refuse to do that. And again, I've talked about this many times. You know, a lot of people that come from the USA or places that have immigrants, you know that we have pockets of, again, little Cuba, you know, a little Havana. Um, you got uh, little China, right? You got little Saigon. You got little... 
you know, whatever, you know, all, all these little pockets of areas of people that are immigrants that kind of stay in that little bubble. And again, there's many reasons for that. I understand. You know what I mean? Remember, I'm an immigrant myself and I get it. You know, you know, if you are in your 20s, early 20s, there's really no excuse to not learn the language. But if you're like 65, 70 years old, I mean, my mom doesn't know English and she lives in the U.S., you know what I mean? <laughs> so I get it. It's totally fine. But with that comes difficulty. Now, my mom happens to live in Miami where everything's in Spanish. So it's all good for her. But for a lot of people that come out here and they just cannot learn the language, well, that's going to be a problem because it's no one, you know, there's going to be very few places that are going to speak English. In fact, in fact, the, the more... It, the more the English language is prominent in the area you're at, the more you're, the more expensive things tend to be. It's as simple as that. So if you go to certain areas that are going to be speaking in English, things are going to be English, and they're going to be catering to that English, okay, that luxury, they're, they're catering to that, um, then it's going to be more expensive no matter what, okay? Now, the deeper you go into the Mexican, you know, neighborhoods, where they don't know any English, you know, outside of a few words here and there that they know from, you know, uh, Facebook or Instagram, you know, or whatever social media is out there, um, then, you know, things are going to be cheaper. You know, I live in a very Mexican neighborhood. I'm surrounded by Mexicans. I'm just in, in, in Mexicans. You know, I, mean? I don't know. The, the closest expat to me is kilometers away. You know, it's as simple as <laughs> it's the truth, you know, and, uh, you know, but things are very inexpensive in my area, my neighborhood. Now, I go to the the centro. I go to certain areas where there's like a, an enclave, you know, a lot of other expats, you know, in the same area. And then um, things are going to be more expensive. And not only going to be more expensive, but the simple fact that, you know, in a lot of these areas, you know, you're not going to find, you know, the, the really awesome things that make Mexico great because they're surrounded by other Americans or other expats or other foreigners and it's not necessarily Mexican or Mexicos or the Mexicans that are there are catering to you with your wants and your needs and your desires and and a lot of you guys don't like uh, you know tong tacos you know or tripe or you know whatever it is that the typical Mexican eats you're just not into it okay and um and, and i get it i understand you know what i mean it's you know every culture has their foods you know just like a mexican you know might not want to eat chitlins or whatever you know i i get it you know but they'll eat you know a tripe taco you know go figure so it is what it is and so the, the thing is that because of the, the lack of integration the lack of all that a lot of people they are coming out here and they're quickly realizing oh my god my dollar is not what it, it's not what it used to be. Again, what we were talking about earlier. But on top of that, the fact that they're moving into these areas that are predominantly, you know, English speaking areas or expat filled areas. And so then things are going to just be more expensive. So it's a triple whammy when it comes to the cost of living. OK, now the quadruple whammy is the fact that living in those areas is also going to be higher in rent. Not only are, are just the basic things going to cost you more money, but the rent, the rent itself is definitely going to be through the roof, you know, double or triple. And that's why a lot of people, they come out here and they're like, oh, my God, I don't know what you're talking about, Jose. I can't find a place to live for $400. You know, all the places to live are, you know, $800, $1,000, $1, $1,200. But then again, if you see, you know, where they want to live. Well, yeah, that's what the prices of those houses cost. It's like in the USA, you know, prices, you're not going to find any affordable housing in Beverly Hills. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know what the, you know what I'm saying? Or certain nice areas, you know? And the same thing, the same thing is like, you're not going to find a, a $2 million, you know, a mega home mansion or whatever in the middle of the hood, in the middle of um, Watts, in the middle of, I don't know, Little Haiti. I don't know, you know, like the worst neighborhood, you know, North Miami. I don't know. Sorry, I'm sorry I'm picking on these places. Compton, whatever, you know? So it's it's the same thing, you know what I mean? Like it's 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 uh, well, people just don't understand that. So it's like if you want, you know, your cost of living to, you know, your your apartment, your home to be cheap, it can be cheap. Again, there are Facebook groups. We were talking about this in the last live stream I did, where I was pointing out to the fact that you know, like in Merida, we have a group, you know, a lot of other expats, you know, that are you know um, helping 
other expats are like i'm helping you guys and you know they want to continue helping some of you some of them are in fact the guy that created the group has made a few videos here with me david rogers but long story short all i'm saying is that shout out to you <laughs> all i'm saying is the fact that um you, you can find affordable housing here you know and we were just kind of like skimming through it in the live stream when we were doing it the other day and we saw that there were like amazing homes amazing homes for under 500 dollars. okay like homes like three bedroom two bath homes okay for that price so they're out there but again that same home that same home you know um can also be rented out to the wrong person you know by the wrong person you know for triple that price because an expat might come out here and be like wow a three bedroom two bathroom home and you're all and it's only a thousand two hundred dollars that's wow i'll take it i'll take it you know what i mean because it's like you know they might come from an area where a thousand two hundred dollars only gets them a room you follow so it's things like that you know what i mean it's like the fact that you know you know people have to do a lot of due diligence and a lot of work that they just choose to not do and then they complain and then they just blame everybody blame the world you know blame oh it's the gentrification oh it's the you know um what is it called it's the other expats oh it's youtubers that are making videos oh blah 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 listen again I, I, let me repeat the majority of people that are causing the gentrification and making things more expensive in mexico are mexicans or other mexicans okay it has nothing to do with any one of you every one of us every one of us okay that are foreigners and expats are a tiny minority in mexico okay please understand that okay that we are just a tiny minority okay and we are not changing anything all right we're, we're not even involved in politics you know most of us here are on like tourist visas or temporary residencies you know come on give me a break you know you don't even speak the language or barely speak the language what do you what are we doing what are we doing you know and as i keep saying i keep i'm gonna keep reminding you guys because this is going to be a topic that we're going to be discussing going forward many, many times okay because it's a major issue is the the whole dollar currency you know the whole dollar your your currency compared to the mexican peso okay so as time goes on and the mexican peso keeps getting stronger and your currency keeps getting weaker well then guess what things are just going to get more and more expensive for you and so you know there's ways you can protect yourself there's a lot of ways in which that doesn't affect you we've talked about it multiple times before on the channel and um you know this is all financial literacy and financial knowledge that you guys need to you know start educating yourself on if you don't know already because is this this is something that's going to be a major issue for anyone coming out here because again think about the fact that one day let okay right now you might have a retirement of a thousand two hundred and you come out here and you can live out here no problem you'll be doing great we're doing great but as time goes on and that one thousand two hundred dollars might not be worth the same anymore and the peso is getting stronger and stronger that one thousand two hundred dollars might you know be only worth like three thousand pesos and what is three thousand pesos that's that's nothing that's only 150 bucks and that's what grandma gets you know from the from the mexican government for her retirement or whatever you know for being grandma all right so um that's not enough for rent you know that's barely enough for rent okay so what are you gonna do then you know what are you gonna do then so you know and that's a major possibility now that's an extreme case you know what i mean that the mexican peso gets so strong and the dollar gets so weak that that happens now that might not happen with the dollar but it's a definite possibility with other currencies so just keep that in mind as well so you know for a lot of people out there you know what i mean this is why you know a lot of my content believe it or not is is actually catered to more of the younger people out there that can come out here and they can figure out a way to start making a living out here and actually integrate into the society and figure out a way to start eventually down the line make pesos because that's the only way to really survive not make you know other currencies from other parts of the world now again things could change things are very different at the moment it is you know a major advantage that you can make dollars and pesos i mean sorry the dollars um euros or whatever because obviously they're worth more than the peso and as of now they can buy you more but that's going to change it's, it's constantly changing so and it's a fluid thing so a lot of people need to be aware of that and that 
again brings me to my other point where i've talked about this in other videos too is the fact that a lot of people come out here and they end up just going broke because they come out here and like i said they don't hack it as a digital nomad or you know they you know get their what is it they get their retirement or their pension and then instead of let's say that their pension is a thousand five hundred bucks a month you know one thousand five hundred dollars a month for retirement and instead of spending a thousand and saving five hundred every month they spend all 1500 so then a medical emergency happens they don't have any money or any other kind of emergency happens and they don't have any money and they can't deal with it and then sometimes they got to go back home and so it's just the fact that you know a lot of people out there don't budget correctly or they're they have unrealistic expectations you know as to what they're going to be able to get out here for their money and uh or unrealistic you know um cost of living you know when it comes to again you know what they want to do every day because again I've talked about it many times before. You can, if you have to, if you have to, you can survive out here on three to four hundred dollars a month. I mean, again, dire straits, you can do it. It can happen. But do you want to do that? Most people don't want to do that. Again, there's a few people that do because, again, they have a different kind of mentality of what life is. And uh, they might be traveling nomads or, you know, backpackers or whatever in a different kind of mindset. And uh, for them, you know, that's plenty of money from per month. Um, but for most people, you're probably going to need like around 800 US dollars or a thousand US dollars. And again, that is only to just live a regular, normal, like lower middle class Mexican life or a middle class Mexican life. Because again, as I keep telling you guys, as things keep changing with the economy, most Mexicans are making more money one way or the other. <clears throat> and the economy is going up and so a lot of people out there when you're complaining that a mexican is giving you a gringo price well guess what there's a line of other mexicans behind you willing to pay that same price and they're not complaining so when you're out there you know and you're complaining you know that they're selling you that hot dog or they're selling you whatever they're selling you for a more expensive price you got to realize that again everyone else that's standing in line waiting for that same item is a mexican and they're more than happy to pay it and they can afford it and there's no problem so if you're having a problem affording it or if you think it's too expensive because when you came to mexico many years ago things were very cheap and now they're not as cheap well then you need to again do a little bit of introspective and figure out what is going on there okay because like i said you can still live out here very comfortably you know for a thousand dollars a month but that means that, you know, you're not going to have a BMW <laughs> and that your walls are going to be green. All right. And things like that. All right. Or whatever. And, you know, I'm sure you can afford better paint. All right. I'm sure you can have a, what is it like a, a better, <laughs> you know, I'm sure the, the, what is it? The paint has nothing to do with uh, the money. Anyways, whatever, man. Sorry. All right. Me trying to make my dumbass jokes. But that's the thing, you know what I mean? There is a lot to talk about when it comes to all this stuff. And the reality is, is that, you know, I made this list here and I think I covered it all without, you know, going from one to two to three to four to five or whatever. But, you know, there there is a lot of things that, you know, a lot of people are don't realize until they come out here. And by the time they come out here, it might be too late. All right. Meaning, you know, once you realize it, once you're here, then what? You either adapt or you go back. And a lot of people end up going back and that's the reality of it and that, but i've said many times you know if you are a person that has already been used to survival a person that has already gone through a lot in life a person that you know already lives paycheck to paycheck and and you know again you'll come from a different uh you know part of life you know what i mean again you're you've always kind of been poor or struggling or what have you you're you're a hard worker you're a hustler you know you always figure out a way you know you might have a business and all these things if you're you'll be fine you'll be totally fine you'll be totally fine but if you're coming out here and you just think that you're just gonna you know again live like with your feet up in the air and just you know living like a king and all this other stuff you better make sure that not only you have enough money but that you know how to budget correctly and that you know what you're doing and that again all of these things that i covered here are covered for you as well because before you know it you're going to be one of those expats that's complaining that things are expensive you cannot 
on, you know, integrate to the society. You know, everyone's gringo pricing you. People don't like you. They, it sucks out here. I hate the weather, whether it's cold or hot or whatever it is. And you're going to just be one of those people. And it's fine, you know, because eventually, bye, Felicia. You know, you just end up leaving. And it's only for the better of everyone around you. Okay. So, you know, please understand that moving to Mexico is not for everybody. It's not for everyone. It's as simple as that, okay? And uh, for some people, once they come to Mexico, they quickly realize, wow, where have you been my whole life? I feel at home. This is true freedom. True, wow. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people feel that way and they think that way. But a lot of people also feel the complete opposite. Where they come out here and one thing keeps going wrong after the other, after the other, more things, you know, they just never gets better and before they know it you know their whole idea their whole bubble of uh, a thought as to you know mexico being this amazing paradise this very inexpensive place to live like a king and you know yada 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 um all that just you know blows up you know that whole bubble disappears now again this is not to say that you can't come out here you know with a fat wallet and live like a king you sure can you sure can you know definitely you know what i mean but uh but just understand that, you know, you better have a fat wallet, okay? Just, just like anywhere else, all right? And, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I can go on and on, you know, talking talking about this topic, but I got to start wrapping it up, all right? Because, hey, I think you guys also have things to do, and you guys don't want to be listening to me all day long. Now, for those that do want to listen to me all day long, that's great. I got a gazillion other videos, well, not a gazillion, but a lot of other videos on the channel that you guys can check out. In fact, once I'm done with this outro here, you can click on the links that I'm going to be providing, like I always do, to playlist of, you know, videos and just random videos and all this other stuff. And, you know, continue watching videos and educating yourself on what you really need to know about, you know, what I mean, when moving to Mexico, because there's a lot of YouTubers out there, but most of them ain't talking about the things I talk about. And, uh, you know, some people like it, some people don't. But if you're still watching right now, I think you enjoy this content. And with that being said, I want to give a big shout out to all my patrons. Give a big shout out to all my members. Give a shout out to every single one of you guys that's always contributing to the show. You know, whether you're asking me questions, you know, whether you're sending me donations, whether you're participating into the new, you know, ask me a question and I answer it for a fee thing. You know, anything you guys are doing, every single thing that you're doing to help me and help support the show and in turn helping each other we're all helping each other here that's all we're trying to do when you guys share my videos when you share my knowledge it, you're helping everyone else out there okay honestly yes you guys are definitely helping me and it really helps out that we're all helping each other here but at the end of the day that's all i'm trying to do is that you know just help others you know that are following in my footsteps i came out here five years ago with a backpack and 1500 bucks to my name and uh no YouTubers or no information, no nothing about this area or Mexico. And um, I survived and uh, and I documented a good majority of my journey throughout. And uh, it's been, you know, very helpful to so many of you. And I want to continue this and you guys help me continue this. All right. Whether you buy me a coffee or send me a dollar or five dollars or just a thank you or just a comment or a like or a share. Definitely share. All those help so much and help immensely and again if you watch all the way through you're the real king all right i don't care what anybody says about you you the boss you the man so or the woman <laughs> or the whatever you want to be anyways with that being said thanks so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this you already know what to do if you like this kind of content don't forget to please like please subscribe please share please hit that bell icon but more importantly than anything else please stay awesome thanks again for watching and i'll see you on the next one bye guys